Are we live? Okay, so I'd like to call to order the uh, board meeting for January 4th, 2022. And I'd like to ask Linda Harder to lead us in the flag salute in honor of her birthday. Everyone can stand. With your right hand in your heart, ready to begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Linda. Okay, so we need to approve the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Marilyn, a second. Vicki, thank you. Any discussion? Okay, I'd like, oh, I'm not asking Grace to join, uh, to ask the, for a preferential vote because she wasn't able to join us tonight. So all in favor, vote aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. All right, at this time we'll call for public comments. Um, before I do that really quickly, I just want to remind everybody that we, anybody watching, that we are actually here in person at the district office. We are on Zoom because we have um, someone who's gonna be presenting to us remotely, but the boardroom is open and people are able to come for public comments. So moving on to public comments at this time, um, we'll call for public comments. A reminder that comments are limited to items on the agenda and limited to three minutes per person. Linda, do we have any? Okay. All right, so next item is uh, employer employee relations personnel report 2122 number seven. Is there a motion to approve the employer employee relations personnel report 2122 number seven? Thank you, Marilyn, second. Thank you, Chester. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Okay. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is redistricting. Education Code Section 5019.5 requires the adjustments of area boundaries following each decennial federal uh, census, if necessary. The adjustments, if needed, shall ensure that the population of each trustee area is proportional pursuant to Education Code Section 5019.5. The district retained the services of National Demographics Corporation to review the census data and determine if trustee boundaries are in compliance with the law. Here with us today is Dr. Justin Levitt, Vice President of National Demographics Corporation. And um, he is gonna be joining us remotely for his part of the presentation. And I'm going to kick it over to Dr. McLaughlin. To take well, it from here. Yeah, thank you, President Klasker, members of the board and audience at home. Just to reiterate again, we are here in person. Um, we've been planning this meeting for several months, and uh, as within COVID, the best laid plans require a certain level of flexibility. So we appreciate Dr. Levitt um, being able to zoom in and continuing his discussion. This is, uh, I believe, our th third uh, moment, uh, dating back uh, twice, at least in my tenure, um, and uh, in really a rich discussion. This is a, a, an essential part of the, really, the American American democratic system, uh, where we use the census to determine um, our boundaries and districting in all areas, and in our case, within the Fullerton G Joint Union High School District, which are in trustee areas. And so tonight, um, the board will be listening to further information from Dr. Le Levitt, and then the item for consideration tonight is, is really a, a no change option. So after discussion, if the board uh, selects a no change option uh, and passes that, then we will be done. Um, we'll move forward and it'll be set for the next 10 years as it is, our trustee areas. Um, if the board selects not to um, vote approval of the no change option, it'll immediately take us into the next step, which is a change option, in which case the board and uh, would be asked for additional input. And then Dr. Levitt and his team would go to work on possible maps and we'd return to a meeting prior to March 1st, which is our deadline. Uh, to uh, look at those options and, and for board consideration. And we try to do that in the next couple of weeks if possible, obviously within the world of COVID and Dr. Levitt's um, schedule uh, to bring him in. So um, with that set up, I'll turn it over to you, Dr. Levitt. Thank you again for being with us remotely. Okay, uh, thank you. And uh, thank you to everyone who's there. 
I apologize that I'm unable to attend in person. Um, I had a fever of 101 last night and out of an abundance of caution, I decided that it was better to ask to do it on, on remotely rather than being here in person. Um, now, uh, this is the second time I've been here, but I remember that Ron came and presented um, before my first time. So this is the third time we're talking about uh, redrawing or looking at our current trustee areas to see if they still follow the legal requirements. Um, and so to that extent, I've put together a short presentation to kind of walk you through the options. Uh, now, just to kind of reestablish some background for those of you who are hearing this for the first time, um, when we switched to by trustee area elections in 2016, we used 2010 census data as required by law. Now, every 10 years following the release of the new decennial census, the district is required to look at its current trustee areas and if necessary, make adjustments to bring them into compliance particularly with the Equal Population and Voting Rights Act requirements. Trustee areas cannot vary more than 10%. That means that we have the difference between the largest and smallest trustee area cannot be more than 10%. Um, and of course, we have to do an analysis of any changes in the demographics um, as part of our legal requirements. Now, um, the Ed Code gives us a statutory deadline for making adjustments of March 1st. If the district fails to complete the process by March 1st, and that means even just not passing a resolution at all, um, even if the current districts are within balance, the process automatically goes to the County Committee on School District Organization that then gets to redraw your boundaries for you. Um, now, the way we avoid this is by the district taking action to um, either readopt or adopt a map with changes prior to March 1st. Um, this is a bit different from the districting process. There's no mandatory role for the county committee or state board of education. If you adopt the map um, as a board by March 1st, we do not have to deal with the county committee at all. Um, and just if you've been following the city or county processes, the Fair Maps Act does not apply to school districts. Um, only the federal voting requirements of equal population and the Voting Rights Act um, are required and school districts then get to select which other criteria they want to prioritize in which order. Um, now, looking at our current map, uh, our analysis shows that the current trustee area lines are still within the 10% deviation. In fact, we found the overall deviation um, was 7.22%. Um, so this is under that 10% deviation. Um, this means that it is possible for the district to currently readopt the current boundaries used in the 2016, 2018, and 2020 elections um, and revisit this process again in 10 years. Um, and so this really lays out the different options that the board has for revisiting this. And by the way, I'll just mention, we did a look at the Voting Rights Act analysis. Um, we do have a majority Latino district and a majority Asian American district. Um, it's not possible to draw a second uh, Latino majority district or a second Asian majority district at this time. Um, so the options that the board has tonight are to adopt a resolution uh, or, you know, basically move forward with the current districts. I won't say adopt a resolution, but, you know, move forward with the current districts or modify a new map prior to March 1st. And if the board does one or two, we avoid number three, which is let the county committee step in and uh, redraw the boundaries for you. Now we've been asked to price out the different options and this is all following the numbers in the uh, contract um, that we submitted um, when we uh, were hired on. Um, for a no change option, the 6,500 is our base demographic services. Uh, that includes all of these spreadsheets and maps you've seen thus far. Um, it includes our analysis of whether there is a need to look at Voting Rights Act or other reasons for change, including Equal Population and Voting Rights Act. Um, it also includes these two meetings, um, last time and this time. Um, um, although I will say it's a little bit lower because obviously I'm not there in person and we have a different rate for the in-person versus virtual. Um, and we'll charge you the virtual rate, of course. Um, and there's no additional expenses needed because the board can adopt the current map immediately. Um, if the board wants to go with small changes 
And I'm using the term small changes here deliberately because the contract does talk about minor changes, but the minor changes option is really for those districts that are not population balanced or need a Voting Rights Act um, change to the map. And in this case, neither of those two situations apply. So we're looking at the base demographic services of the full process, 24,500. Um, in addition to that, we will need at least and one additional meeting uh, to present the revisions and for the board to consider and, and select a revised map. Um, however, we don't believe that under this small changes option that there would be additional expenses such as outreach or legal required. Um, if you adopt the small changes or go with the small changes approach, I'm gonna ask for direction today so that we can bring back those maps at the next hearing sometime in Jan late January or February um, to make the adjustment. Now, the other option that we have to talk about is the full process option. Now, this would be in addition to the demographic services, which stay at 24,500, this would involve additional meetings because we would need to have additional hearings, at least one more hearing to take direction probably as a community forum. Um, and then we would need at least two meetings to discuss, discuss and review draft maps, possibly with revisions between the first and the second. This is going to require special meetings at this point uh, because there simply aren't enough regularly scheduled hearings to complete this process by the March 1st deadline. Um, and so I kind of priced that out in terms of five meetings um, and what that would look like. Um, there's also going to be additional expenses in this process, particularly for outreach. So there'll be staffing needs to notify the community that we're going through this process to um, possibly get, you know, reserve space and use space um, at different locations throughout the district, um, as well as staffing um, needs um, as a result of the work that will be not only from us as a demographer, but also from your staff in terms of printing maps and so forth um, as we go through the process. We can't really estimate that. That's why I have the plus sign after the cost because this is kind of the base, 38,250 is the base demographic cost plus whatever you um, decide to expend in tools and other resources. Um, and we've kind of created a table to kind of highlight these differences. Um, you can see the total cost, the base demographic services, um, as well as what we think the number of meetings, materials, and outreach picture would look like. Um, and so we um, are asking tonight to provide direction to us as the demographer and to district staff on which option the board would like to proceed with. Um, I'm happy to, um, if, if you want to make small changes or if you want a full process, um, if we could provide that direction tonight, either on the specific changes or on the full process, that would be really helpful to us and to the district in order to start the process moving of um, getting meetings scheduled and revisions made. Um, so with that, I'm happy to answer any questions about any of the options and um, thank you very much for your time tonight. Hi, Mike. We'll start with that before this part, because it says discussion right here. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah, just to him about what we heard. And okay, perfect. So, does anyone have any questions for Justin about what he just presented? Marilyn, did you? I didn't see you shake your head, so I just want to make sure. Okay. Um, so then resolution 2122 number 25 is presented to the board for consideration to maintain the current trustee area boundaries. Is there a motion to approve this resolution 2122 number 25? I move approval. Thank you, Marilyn. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Chester. The motion is now open for discussion. And I, I just like to remind the board because we are zooming and talking that um, as you talk or want to open up discussion, go ahead and push the, the button. 
Uh, yeah, we'll talk right into the microphone. Yeah. Did you have a question? I do. Well, I, I comment. Uh, I, I have been the one that probably has geeked out the most on this, or at least publicly, because I just find this fascinating. Um, we are in a position where we have, a, you know, the lucky option to not make any changes. Um, and we're also in a position where due to delayed census results because of the pandemic, that if we wanted to really make go full in and think about major changes to what was done five years ago, the timeline is really compressed. And that makes it hard, in my view, to get meaningful input from the community. And that is simply uh, because uh, the result of really two reasons. One, the delayed census information, the the census track or you know the precinct level information was not available till September ish. Then there are uh, localities who have to make changes. And so the demographers are focused there because of the legal requirements for cities or other school districts who have to make changes. And so it's been challenging. This is no crack against the demographer to schedule. And so we're in a situation where if we wanted to do major changes, that would be extremely challenging to get me, in my view, to get meaningful input and to take the time to do that. Um, because again, mostly uh, due to the pandemic. Second of all, um, I had suggested many times about small changes due to the fact that one trustee area does not have a high school within the boundaries. Now that's not in any way a requirement of uh, the Federal Voting Rights Act or the California Voting Rights Act. It might kind of fall under communities of interest, but it, you know, it's not a requirement. And so at this point, given circumstances that are completely beyond anyone's control and despite everyone's best efforts, I, um, I'm not looking at this to make any changes now. I would, in my view, you know, it's, it's not necessarily worth it to do small changes. Um, however, it would be possible to do small changes to create a trust or a high, so that the trustee area has a high school. So those are my thoughts just to get the conversation started and we'll turn it back to you, President Klotzker. Does anybody else have any thoughts or comments on, on this? Marilyn? Well, I'm looking at the redistricting criteria and looking Excuse at- Excuse me, Ms. Ms. Bushy, we push your microphone? So it'll it'll then go to the audience at home as well. Okay. Thank you. I put my focus on the redistricting criteria that was presented by Justin uh, relative to the federal laws and the traditional redistricting principles. And I find that the map that we have complies with mm -hmm. all of these criteria, which I think are valid and important. Um, with that in mind, that was the reason for my motion to retain the maps that we have. Vicki? Um, I was, I mean, I, I've been here all my life and I've worked, I've been to schools here and, and we've never had a representative to, to actually have a school in our district. And I hear what um, it's, I hear what you're saying, Ms. Pally. But at this point, you're right. We don't have the time. But maybe down the road, maybe we can get Fullerton or maybe Troy into my district. But it has been unfortunate. But I'm I'm excited that I get to help out Buena Park. So that's okay. But yeah, you're right. We have not had anything in Area Three. And I appreciate you making that a a point of contention tonight. Thanks. Chester? You know, I'm looking at the numbers and the deviation is only 7.22. Mm -hmm. It's it's so slight. And besides looking at the 7.22, I also looked at the per district to see the population increase or, or decrease. And it's it's pretty much stable. And you know, at, at this point, I just don't think that we should proceed with any type of change at all because you no know, one, time is an issue, and two, the cost. I, I think our district has better means to do with our money than to spend it on trying to figure out if we should change this and change that. It, it's not, it's not at 7.22, it's just not enough for me to, to say that we should proceed with this. 
So I would like to say no change too. And I think Chester, I'm I'm going to kind of build off of what you said when I was looking at the numbers and only getting to that seven percent, where the ten percent is the threshold, is what jumped out at me. Um, and not meeting that threshold, and then not spending the money right now on this when we don't meet that requirement. Um, you know, I would anticipate that you know at the next census we may. Who knows what will happen in the community at that point? But right now, um, I'm. In agreement with you, I think we we don't meet that threshold. Things are are relatively um, equal and stable, and so that's my thought on that as well. Does anybody else have any anything else to to add? Okay, so um, I'd like to now call for a roll call vote on the resolution. Ms. Klasker? Aye. Ms. Foley? Aye. Dr. J? Aye. Dr. Calhoun? Aye. And Ms. Bushy? Aye. Thank you. Okay. So the resolution passes. Thank you. I'll just make a, a, a quick comment. I really appreciate uh, one, Dr. Levitt for being here. We know you're not feeling well. And so we wish you all the best in a, a speedy recovery and um, and really appreciate everybody's flexibility. And, and really just to let the audience know at home, this has been a conversation going on with this, this board. Uh, it's June, July when um, Ron was here, Dr. Levitt was here, I think October and now today. And then we've also had internal conversations and study around it. So while it, it appears to be a quick action, uh, there's been many months and many Many hours of uh, deliberation and research around it. So we appreciate you know the consideration tonight and understand that at this point we're uh, with the passage of this we're going to move forward with a no change resolution. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. So second to everything Dr. McLaughlin just said, well stated, and uh, the meeting will stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Do I need to?